Every evolution in golf has come either through access to new material or manufacturer's innovation. And in the Golfing World Lab, we are going to build a timeline of all of golf's game changers, studying how we analyze the swing, the equipment that you use, and even being able to study every single thing that happens from impact all the way through the ball's flight until it lands on the ground. We are going to create a timeline of this history so that we can see where the game came from, where it is now, and where it's going in the future. In the Golfing World Lab, we're looking at all things which have changed the evolution and the direction of the game of golf, and nothing has been a bigger game changer than the golf ball. In 1450, it started off with sort of wooden balls and wooden clubs, but you can imagine how unfulfilling it was up on the east coast of Scotland in a howling gale, hitting a wooden ball into the wind as it disappeared and went straight up over your head. So the game was really changed significantly by the feathery. The feathery golf ball was way harder, way more dynamic, and distance has always been a huge ambition of every golfer. So a feathery was made by taking goose feathers, wetting them, stuffing them into this little sack which would then be sewn up. So the feathers would were sort of dry, the sack then would harden and you got a way more dynamic golf ball. There are even records of players back in that time hitting it over 300 yards. So the game has changed and all golfers were in, uh, sort of ambitious to get more distance. The feathery lasted for 400 years. So in 1850, you know, explorers found from the sapodilla tree in East Asia this sap which came out which was called gutty and this made a very very hard golf ball and in 1850 it was way way cheaper so it allowed m many more people to enjoy the game of golf uh, it only cost a shilling back then sort of about the same as a pint of beer in nowadays terms and it massively grew the game of golf especially for those people who were fe feeling sort of slightly flush after the industrial revolution so then in 1902, the Haskell golf ball was created from the United States. Um, what happened was they found that you could get a sort of a small, firm center, wrap around rubber, sort of very, very tightly compacted, and then this gutty cover was put around that and it became a way more dynamic golf ball. And in 1902, Sandy Hurd beat Braid and Varden in the Open Championship with that golf ball. He used it all four days and really that was a massive game changer. So the Haskell golf ball, if we take a look at it, here's the outside cover. Inside you can see there all of the tensed up rubber bands that were used to make this golf ball really way more dynamic, way, way, way more durable. And from this durable golf ball, iron golf clubs were really used in mass production. From this technology, um, different covers were tried. We had Bellata, we had Serlin, which led us all the way up to this golf ball here. And interestingly enough, there was quite a lot of debate about how big the ball should be and how heavy it should be. And the RNA and the USGA uh, came together in the 20s to agree, but then the Americans broke the agreement. They went to a 1.68 golf ball. So this was the 1.62. This is the 1.68, and because the golf ball was so much better, the British PGA during the 60s decided to test this golf ball, and in the 70s and 80s it was determined that the small ball was no longer competitive and it was eventually banned. So in the game of golf, the golf ball has been the biggest game changer.